Okay guys, how we doing? We're gonna do a complete pistol confidence class here. Uh, there's a ton of new gun owners right now and I think this is something that I'd just like to put it out there. It's kind of given away some of my process and, and some of my sauce, but uh, I just think it, it's something that, that could potentially help a lot of people. Even if you're a seasoned shooter and you've been around for a while, maybe maybe you'd like to adopt some of this. When you're teaching a, uh, a maybe a coworker or a friend or a loved one, uh, you can use this recipe for success. And it's basically a, a simple recipe that we can follow. And that's why I wanted to do the video in this format and put it out there. This is my, my process to spin up a new beginning shooter and get them confident and proficient right away. Okay, this is my whole basic process. Obviously, we go a lot deeper into each individual thing as we're doing it because we have an entire day to do so. Whereas here, I'm just gonna be kind of laying it out for you. But know that, that this, is, this is a recipe for success. It truly is. And if you take this and you use this as a recipe and you follow it, the next time you go to the range, you can follow this exact recipe and start doing work on the targets right away, okay? You can start manipulating. You can start dominating over that tool. You can start really just, your confidence will go through the roof, your learning curve through the roof. I mean, really shorten, shorten the time it takes to gain proficiency if you follow this, all right? My, my philosophy on shooting is best concepts, best techniques, best principles, best practices. I've done a, uh, a mountain of research in order to spin myself up, right? In order to get myself to a fairly high level of proficiency very quickly, I did a ton of research. And then I realized, okay, I did get myself pretty proficient and pretty, you know, fairly good at shooting very quickly. So then I realized that it was taking others very, very long time to do that. And then organically, you know, you kind of teach your buddy and you teach this person, that person, a couple here and there. And next thing you know, you're starting to teach this stuff. So what I realized was, is if I use that best principles, best concepts, uh, best techniques, best practices motto, I could research the hell out of it and then give that to people so that they can have linear progression, right? I don't want to give you techniques that you're just going to plateau with a year later and understand, oh, now I got to change all my stuff again because what I learned as a beginner won't work anymore as I progress and get better. Uh, I need to start over. So we don't want to do that. I want to go straight from the get-go with the good, okay? So that being said, confidence 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 and domination over the tools all right this pistol is simply a tool it's the same thing as a car it's the same thing as a as a chainsaw all right yes it is potentially dangerous all we have to do is get confident and proficient in the manual of arms in the operation of this device in the operation of this tool and then we can do what we need to do with it and feel super confident about it. It does no good to have this thing sitting in a safe or have this thing sitting on a nightstand somewhere if you are super inconfident about actually using it. It's the same as having a car in the driveway that you don't know how to drive. And then that analogy kind of works perfect for shooting. Cars, you, you get good at driving a car and you get confident with it very quickly because you get reps, you get seat time. With a pistol or a firearm, a lot of times somebody buys one and then they go to the range and they maybe take a little uh, an entry level course or something, but then they go a six months later and a lot of the time it's not setting you up with a recipe that you can follow and follow and follow and follow and follow. Every time you, every time you go to shoot or every time you get that pistol out to do some dry practice with, you can follow these recipes and end up just, just Gaining confidence and proficiency is fairly fast. I mean, it's, it's super simple. So what do we need? Safety, fundamentals of marksmanship, fundamentals of shooting, and reps, right? We need, we need best practices and, and reps of doing all those things. We need to build a platform, a package, and, and be able to repeatedly come up with the same results. So safety. First things first, gotta talk about safety. Okay, four rules of gun safety. 
Always treat all guns if they're loaded, unless you individually have cleared and, and, and checked that gun and made sure that that gun is in fact unloaded for whatever you are doing at that time. You as an individual, meaning if I hand you a gun and say that it's unloaded, that's not good enough. Once the gun becomes mine in my possession under my control, I need to then clear it, check it, know the status of the weapon right then and there. So that's rule number one. Rule number two, trigger discipline. Keep your finger off the trigger, high on the slide, away from the trigger guard and the trigger so that you have to make a conscious decision to one, put your finger in the trigger guard and two, actually pull the trigger, okay? So two decisions have to happen before that trigger actually gets pulled, okay? Number three is muzzle discipline. Just pretend that there's a, a laser beam lightsaber from Star Wars uh, flying out of the muzzle of that gun and anything we touch with it we can potentially destroy. So do not point it at anything you do not wish to, ins to destroy, okay? As we go through this, you'll see me handling the, the, the firearm. You won't see me sweeping myself. You won't see me willy-nilly just pointing it all over the damn place, okay? Muzzle discipline. Uh, the, the last one is know your target and what's behind it. Bullets go through stuff, okay? So uh, it's big and dry practice, setting yourself up for success on the range, knowing down range, know what's a safe direction, know that your, your bullets are going to go through items and keep going. Uh, in dry practice, making sure that you're, you're picking a spot in your house where you're in the basement and there's, there's ground behind you or you're in a, uh, uh, towards an exterior wall with no other structures and no other humans outside of that wall. Uh, don't dry practice on a wall where your bedroom or your bathroom or kids room is uh, is on the other side of that. Be smart about it. Bullets go through stuff. Okay, so uh, that's that's the safety rules in a nutshell. But complacency and and stacking negligence is what really leads to problems. The the rules are are in a in a certain way so that. If you would screw up and have a negligence uh, issue or a complacency issue, which leads to negligence, uh, if you screw up and have an issue, hopefully you're following the other three rules. So whichever one you broke, hopefully the other three rules will allow you to not actually have an injury to yourself or someone else. So they're, they're kind of stacked so that, you, uh, so that you don't have any big issues we need to kind of understand it and wrap our head around it, wrap our brain around these concepts before we ever actually go shoot around, right? Knowing these things a little bit and kind of, like I said, getting your head wrapped around these, these concepts before you actually shoot helps a lot. And in everything in shooting, the more, you, the more you really pay attention and understand the concept in which you are trying to um, employ, uh, the better off you're going to do when you actually physically go to do that task. So fundamentals of marksmanship. What do we have to do to get a bullet to leave this device and hit where we intend to hit, okay? Sight alignment, sight picture, trigger press, follow through, fundamentals of shooting, grip, stance, stuff like that. Uh, it's all fairly simple stuff and we'll, we'll kind of blend all that together in all this that we're about to do. So uh, just, just understanding that we need to be able to break our trigger with our sights aligned on target and break our trigger and allow the gun to fire when we, let, when we tell it to and not disturb the gun in the process, okay? So that, that kind of sounds complicated or whatever, but it's a very, very simple process and a very, very simple concept. Um, but we'll talk more and more about that as we go here. Now, this first block is basic manipulation and kind of starting to understand how does this thing work, okay? So, I've got a pistol here. I've got no magazine in it, but I need to clear it out, make sure that we're ready to rock and roll. It was cleared prior to this. I've got an empty magazine here, but because I've been bullshitting here and I've been distracted, we're going to clear it out again. So, I'm going to check and make sure that I have an empty chamber. I am not looking for brass. I am not looking for a bullet because sometimes if you're looking for a bullet or brass, you open it up and see one and think, oh yeah, I'm good, pow, okay? 
no bueno. We're looking for an empty chamber, empty gun, empty magazine, empty magazine well, empty mag, empty gun, empty, 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 okay? So I'm going to rack the gun a few times. I'm gonna make sure I am clear, clear, clear. I am gonna look away, okay? Then I'm gonna come back and do it again. I'm gonna be redundant about it so that I have now double checked to make sure that this gun is in fact, I'm gonna triple check it, you know what I mean? Who cares, right? Better safe than sorry. And I believe this thing is actually as empty as it gets, okay? So, now, I have a clear gun here. I have a clear magazine here. We are gonna place these two items on this table, all right, this, this <laughs> table. Okay, so this is where our recipe begins. This is where the, the meat and potatoes of all this shit begins. This is where I want you to start really understanding that I want you to do all of this, okay? I'm gonna be talking about the stuff, but what we're doing here is, is, is very, very important. Now, first things first, we need to understand how this device works, okay? Just like a car brakes, gas, steering wheel, mirrors. How does the thing work, right? It's got an engine, a transmission, it transfers to the wheels, it drives the car. Uh, how does this item work? Okay, so we have a firearm. We have a reciprocating slide. We have a magazine. The magazine feeds into the bottom of the gun and if you look, the bullets will be stripped off and placed into the barrel via that reciprocating slide, okay? So the magazine has a spring inside of it. It's constantly pushing bullets up. As one bullet goes out, the next one gets pushed up. The slide goes back, picks up the next one, chambers around, pow, the, 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 the uh, process repeats itself. So fairly simple in the mechanical way this thing works. Now obviously it's, it's pretty intricate once you get into the actual what's this thing do and what's that thing do, but you'll learn that. And the more you can actually learn about the physical, you know, the, the, the mechanical device here, it actually does help you with shooting. The, the thing now to start understanding is that this is a simple hammer, okay? This is a hammer. This is a tool in the most literal sense of the word. It is a tool, okay? We being the operator of this tool, need to dominate over it, all right? I tell this thing what to do. It does not dictate anything. I tell it what to do, okay? It is a hammer. It is nothing else. I tell it what to do. I dominate over the pistol. Every manipulation, everything that I do to this gun, I am being violent and I am telling it in the most harsh way what to do, okay? So start to get that seared into your brain that you do what I tell you to when I tell you to. That also helps with safety. This thing don't just go off, okay? It does what I tell it to do and start getting a little bit angry about it. Start getting a little bit aggressive about it, okay? We don't handle our guns like like this. Okay. Uh, no. All right, I want you to rip the slide off the gun. I want you to handle that thing and dominate over that tool. Okay, it is a hammer. Dominate over it. Be angry and aggressive about it. You can't hurt it. You can't hurt it. I promise you. I try to all the time and I, I've yet to hurt any of them, okay? Uh, so, dominate, dominate, dominate over the tool, all right? So now what we're gonna do is start to really learn how this thing works and how to manipulate it and everything by simply doing reps of picking this pistol up, picking the magazine up, picking the pistol up, getting a good firing master grip on the pistol, situating it, doing whatever you have to do. You got to pick it up with both hands, situate it in your hand, get the perfect master grip on it, and then pick up a magazine, insert the magazine, rip the freaking slide off the gun. You can push forward and rip at the same time, 
doesn't really matter. You can slingshot style or you can kind of run it from front cocking serrations if the gun has them. Doesn't really matter which one you choose. Just get good at it. Um, so then we start to understand. Mag goes in, rip the slide off the gun. All right, we're getting somewhere. We're starting to learn how this thing works, right? So we set it down again. We build that perfect, perfect, perfect master dominant grip. We present it, slam the slide in, or slam the magazine in, rip the freaking slide off the gun, okay? Now, obviously with an empty magazine, it's going to lock the slide to the rear. Then, what I want you to do is take the magazine out and understand how this button works, your, your slide release. You push down on it, it sends the slide home. That'll come into play uh, eventually later on, but all this really is, is a few minutes of you kind of really just just understanding okay that button drops a magazine uh i'm just manipulating gun right so reps 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 so i want you to do about three minutes four minutes straight of just that and you might think oh that's redundant i'm not doing that do it I want you to put this thing in your hand and get real comfortable with it and understand. I tell it what to do, okay? It is, it is subordinate to me. Now, this second block of, of reps and stuff that we're gonna start doing is we are going to start building the package behind this gun. All right, so first things first, I'm gonna start getting a stance. We're still working off the table. We're not working out of a holster. We're not doing any of that yet. We're just working off of a table and I'm starting to develop my stance. So what constitutes a good stance? Stance doesn't have anything to do with really your feet, okay? It's basically the package that you put together behind the gun, the structure that you put together behind the gun. The better structure and the better package you put together behind the gun, it does not matter the position that you're in. It does not matter, I could be with one foot, and as long as I put together a good package, meaning my top structure and my bottom structure, okay, I, I'm solid, right? So, we talk about stance a little bit. When we're standing here behind the gun, as a beginner, we need to know from the ground up, I want you to stand with one foot slightly behind the other, kind of in a, in a striking stance. <clears throat> I want you to take your, your knees and bend them just a little bit. So I want you to get an inch shorter, right? So we bend our knees a little bit. Now, I want you to take your ass, your butt, and push it out, okay? Just stick it out, just a tiny bit. What that does is unlock your hips and rolls your hips forward a little bit and gets you all of a sudden in a position where you're like, oh, hey, I'm ready to go, I'm ready to leave. Uh, it's a, it's an, a, an athletic position, right? All you gotta do, bend your knees, roll your ass out a little bit, roll your hips forward, now you're okay, you're, you're, you're good to go. Our back, all it needs to do is have a little bit of a positive back angle, which means lean forward a little bit. It's simple. This device is pushing us backwards. We tell it what to do. It don't tell us what to do. So we ain't gonna let it push us backwards. This is all setting up for that. So now I've got a little bit of a positive back angle. My head, the next part of this equation, I wanna stick my head out just a little bit and have my face flat to the environment, flat to my targets, and perpendicular to the ground. So I'm here. I don't wanna be crunched over like this or anything. I'm flat, I'm, I'm perpendicular to the ground. So all my stance looks like is something like this. Super simple, super comfortable. I'm just ready to go. I'm ready to move, I'm ready to do work, whatever. At the end of the day, in a defensive context, we need to be ready to get down. So fighting with this is the same as fighting with these, okay? Competition-wise stuff, any kind of performance shooting, we wanna be explosive and athletic. Well, you're not explosive and athletic standing here sitting on your hips and leaning back. The gun's gonna push you all around. We don't let it tell us what to do, okay? So now we've got that stance. We're, we're just set up for success, bam, that's all it looks like. Nothing special, nothing special whatsoever. Now we're gonna talk about building an upper structure. I call this the top triangle, basically, because it just makes a triangle. Basically what it is, is from the nipples up, what is it, what's your perfect structure look like and how you're gonna develop that? 
Now we need to start getting the gun in our hands and talking about some, some fundamental implements or, or fundamental things here um, to, to build that top triangle structure. So for now, for today, as far as grip goes, I just want you to build a textbook thumbs forward conventional style grip, okay? Later on, down the road, you can start playing with grip pressures and grip styles, and there's a, there's a bunch of ways to grip this pistol, and you'll have to figure out according to your hands and how they work what you want to do there. But first things first, I want to get high and tight. So I'm getting up into that pistol as high and tight as I can, and then I'm flagging my thumb. Why am I flagging this thumb up? Why am I not putting it down there like this? I'm flagging this thumb up to give me all this real estate right here. So there's a couple things we want with a good grip. We want as much hand on the gun as humanly possible. I have to get as much hand on this gun as I possibly can. Okay, so what's, what needs to happen is this thumb needs to get up out of the way so I can get as much of this hand on the gun as possible. Going back to best practices. None of the best shooters in the world, none of them, none of them, none of them, none of them shoot like this anymore. We have developed better techniques, okay? It is the age of the internet. It is the age of film. We see how everyone does it. We see what works and what doesn't nowadays. It's just like the UFC. There are no more strip mall bullshito martial arts uh, places in these strip malls anymore. Why? Because the UFC, we see what works. Thumbs forward style of gripping the pistol is unanimously across the board, absolutely 1000% the best style of gripping. It is, there's no debate anymore. You can't take a cross section of the top 500 pistol shooters on planet earth and every single solitary one of them is doing a thumbs forward grip and still debate for this style of crush grip. If you're using a revolver or something else, okay, now we can talk but for semi-automatic pistols, thumbs forward grip. Basically all that is, is this thumb is flagged high so I can get in there. I want to basically, at first, I want you to take your, your uh, pointer finger of your support hand and just smash it up in against your middle finger and the trigger guard as hard as you can, okay? Smash it up in there. And then I want you to take that thumb and roll it up until it's pointing at the target. So roll it up against the side of the gun and now it's pointing at the target. So then when you present it out in front of your face, now that all this is tight, you're, you're gripping the gun tight with both hands right now. And then when you present it in front of your face, you're gonna start to feel it. We tighten it all right here. As we present it, all of a sudden it's like, oh, I can barely push my arms out there because there's so much friction and leverage on this gun now. So. Uh, and I'm out there, okay? That's what it should feel like. That's what you want. A solid hold of this gun. This thing is going to try to push and jump. You want a uh, solid, solid grip on it. We're not squeezing the hell out of it uh, to the point where we're trembling and shaking. We're just solid all the way around. Solid, solid stuff. <clears throat> the angle of your left hand should be about like a handshake. So if you were to reach out with your left hand and give somebody a handshake, you kind of just reach out like this, bam, right there it is, okay? So you take that, really drive that, that, that uh, pointer finger into the trigger guard and into your middle finger, and then just go whoop, back to that handshake kind of handshake kind of uh, angle, and then present it in front of your face. Now. Here's the reps that you're gonna to start to learn sight alignment, sight picture, and building a repeatable grip. All right, so we take this pistol, we set it on the table. We're not working to have a holster or anything now because everybody has a table. Okay, we set this pistol on a table, we set our hands down behind it. And then we say, okay, pick this pistol up. If I gotta use two hands to pick it up, I don't care. I adjust it using whatever means I can right without muzzling ourselves or doing something stupid whatever means I can I adjust it and get the perfect high 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 and I'm talking about smashing your hand as high as it goes so your middle finger and the web of your hand right here is smashed up into that gun 
high, high, high. Okay, I've got the perfect strong hand grip right now. Then I'm gonna smash my, my pointer finger up underneath that trigger uh, guard and I'm gonna rotate to my handshake and I'm gonna push that gun out, okay? And I should be able to start feeling, all right, I got, I got a handle on this thing and truly you want to get high, okay? The muzzle or the, the gun reciprocates up here. So it's just a lever, it's simple, simple physics. The higher we can get to this reciprocation, the better. So I want you to get as high as you possibly can. And yes, the gun will still work, okay? Our thumbs and stuff, you're not gonna hit your slide release if you do this and get in on the back corner of the back strap with your support hand, okay? Get high, 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 high. Think high and tight, high and tight. We want surface area, as much hand on gun as possible. We want friction and then we want leverage, okay? We build that surface area up and that friction back here and then leverage. And then next thing you know, when that gun tries to move, it ain't going to. Okay, so the reps we're gonna do, again, pick that thing up, do whatever you gotta do, get it in your hands, get it up high and tight. Nice, strong hand grip. Drive that, that pointer finger up in. <clears throat> Build that grip here and then present, all right? Now, I want you to be high and tight. Start doing this, get a tight grip to where you feel like, yeah, yeah, I got a hold of this thing. Yeah, yeah, okay? So, the next thing I want you to start thinking about is sight alignment, sight picture, okay? With iron sighted pistols, this is all you wanna see. Equal height, equal light. Very, very simple concept. As soon as you present that pistol in front of your face and you make it look like this one time, you got it. <laughs> like, it's so simple. I just need you to make this equal. Human beings are very, very good at centering objects with their eyeballs. So I just need you to make that equal. It's extremely, extremely simple, okay? You'll do this naturally. Like I said, humans are good at this. A red dot. It's debatable and, and it's debated whether you should start with iron sights or start with a red dot. I truly don't think it matters. I think whatever pistol you have at your disposal, start getting uh, good with it. It's all the same fundamentals except for kind of uh, sight alignment, sight pictures, a little bit different with the red dot, but you still have to align it. You still have to align the barrel of that gun to that target. So a red dot sight picture, a perfect red dot sight picture, is simply your red dot in the center of the glass. Whether your glass is round or shaped like this RMR, it doesn't matter. The dot in the center, the, uh, the front sight, equal height, equal light in the center, centered up, okay? Equal height across the top, equal light on the sides, meaning just put it in the damn center, okay? Super easy. Now, with front sight, uh, with uh, iron sights, you need to be focused, meaning your eyeballs need to be focused on this front sight. The, the rear sight should look kind of fuzzy, and you'll be able to figure that out as well. Stick the gun up in front of your face, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. You need to focus on that front sight for a while when you begin to shoot, okay? Eventually, you can start to kind of uh, get away with target focusing, even with, uh, even with iron sights, but for the most part, you got to start by, by front sight focusing. Then with the red dot, <clears throat> you need to look at the target completely. Focus 1000% on the target and uh, <clears throat> just simply notice the red dot, okay? Do not look at it, just notice it. All right, so now that we've talked about how to line up sights, super damn simple. We're gonna continue the same exact drill. All right, now that I've walked up there and kind of come back and stuff and didn't have the pistol in my possession the entire time, I'm gonna make sure she's, uh, she's all cleared out again. Um, so, <clears throat> we're gonna do that same drill and rep it out. I want you to pick it up, perfect grip, perfect grip, perfect grip, perfect grip, perfect grip, and present perfect sight alignment, perfect sight picture, all right? Set it back down. Pick it up, perfect grip, perfect grip, perfect grip, perfect grip, perfect grip, perfect sight picture, and perfect sight alignment. All right? I want you to pick it up. Perfect grip, perfect grip, perfect grip, perfect grip, 
perfect sight alignment, perfect sight picture, okay? I want you to do that about 48,000 times, all right? In the actual repetitions now of what we've been doing, remember we worked the manipulation repetitions, just putting the magazine in, ripping the slide off the gun. Putting the magazine in, ripping the slide off the gun. <laughs> then we talked about uh, just, just starting to build that grip. Now we're starting to build that grip and add in the sight picture and the sight alignment, okay? What's the next thing? Now that we have a repeatable grip, okay, and it has to be repeatable. You gotta be doing it the same way every time. You gotta be pinching that, that, that finger up in there and your thumbs, all this stuff, as you're doing it, this is building that top triangle structure. As you're doing it, you should be starting to feel a pattern. Feel, okay, on that rep, Maybe my thumb, maybe I didn't quite get where I wanted with my grip. Okay, negatory, all right? We gotta pick that thing up. Perfect, 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 perfect. Okay, then we rep it out. Sight alignment, sight picture, we rep it out. Another four minutes of that, okay? So now we're potentially a couple of hundred repetitions of manipulating and working on our grip and stuff deep, all right? Doesn't take you long to get a couple couple hundred reps going pretty damn quickly doing that now you're getting the idea okay I can feel when I get that perfect grip and when I get that perfect grip and I present it in front of my face hey I those sights are coming up and they're almost perfectly lined up every time hey that red dots there every time like this stuff matters right and then I'm starting to feel it I, I, I'm starting to really observe and think about feeling what's that feel like when it's perfect What's that feel like when it's perfect? Building the perfect grip, building the perfect grip, building the perfect grip, building the perfect sight alignment, sight picture. What's this feel like? What's this feel like? What's this feel like? So, you're starting to burn all that stuff in, right? And it's you're building it in, in a repeatable process, in a repeatable couple of steps. You're not just simply, oh, well, that one sucked. You know, it's just you're, you're building it in per, perfect, repeatable straps, and you're repeating it, repeating it, repeating it. Perfection, perfection, perfect reps. I'm talking about freaking perfect. Okay. So now, what do we need to do? Well, we need to add in trigger. All right. So what we're going to do here, <clears throat> I want you to grab the pistol. I want you to build that perfect, strong hand grip. Okay. So, we've built that perfect strong hand grip. Most pistols nowadays are gonna be striker fired and stuff. So, basically all of them work somewhat the same. So we'll just kind of talk about it in a general term here. Uh, build that perfect grip with the strong hand. So now I've got a perfect master grip with the strong hand. My finger is high on the slide, just like we talked about earlier. I gotta make a conscious decision to put my finger on the trigger you know inside the trigger guard and then a conscious decision to pull that trigger but what i want you to do is we're going to do a bunch of reps here where we just simply look at the gun and see and feel what this trigger feels like okay so most triggers are going to have a slack meaning a a portion of the trigger that's basically just some free play okay and we call that slack and then when you take out that free play, so you put some pressure on the trigger, it goes back and it's real easy. It's got this slack, this free play, and it goes back and all of a sudden you feel it, oh, right there it got hard. Okay, so what we wanna do here in these reps is prep the trigger and start to really feel what it feels like. So when we take that slack out and, and it goes to that hard point, that's called prepping. So what we wanna do is just sit here Literally, I want your gun six inches away from your face, and I want you to sit here and go, huh. All right, prep, 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 just taking the slack out. Taking the slack out, feeling the hard spot. Taking the slack out, feeling the hard spot. Prep, prep, prep. All right, now I've made the conscious decision. I'm going to break this trigger. All right, all right, prep. I got the hard spot, and I'm putting pressure, putting pressure, putting pressure, putting pressure. Oh, there it went. Cool. Cool. Now, let off the trigger, finger goes back high on the slide, and we say, okay, I want to reset it. So in a strike fire gun, stuff like that, you'll have to reset the trigger by racking the slide. That's another rep. Rack that slide. 
ripping off the gun. Okay, so now we've we've reset that trigger. I'm making the decision to put my finger back in there, and I'm gonna prep, 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 and then I'm gonna break it again. What does that feel like? What's that feel like? What's that feel like? What's it feel like? Okay, so I want you to sit there for three or four minutes and play with your trigger. Okay, empty gun. We've done all our stuff. We've set up. We're we're we're. Working the steps here, working the process. Got an empty gun, we're setting up, we're working that trigger. What's it feel like? If you got a double action, single action pistol like this one, uh, I'm working it. I'm working it. I'm rolling through it. I'm seeing where it breaks. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. I'm trying to notice what it feels like. What does this thing feel like? Okay. How does it work? How much slack is there? How hard do I have to pull on it? Uh, all these things. So now we're going to start to put that whole piece, that whole puzzle together. Now we're gonna put her back down. Okay, so now we put it back down. Guess what we're gonna do? <laughs> perfect strong hand grip, perfect support hand grip. Present it out, perfect sight alignment, perfect sight picture. Conscious decision to put our trigger finger in the trigger well and on the trigger. Conscious decision then to prep that trigger. Conscious decision then to break that trigger. Now, couple things that you need to observe while you're starting to do this now you've built a repeatable grip you're repeatable baby you're you're uh, getting repeatable sight alignment and sight picture okay you're getting now repeatable trigger presses of actually just physically breaking it now we need to observe what is the muzzle doing what are the sights telling me one reason why I like red dots for beginners is because the red dot will literally scream at you that you're dipping or pulling the gun, okay? Where iron sights is a little bit harder to see. But if we just simply, okay, I picked it up. I'm building my perfect support hand grip. I'm rolling it forward. I'm high and tight. I present out perfect sight picture, perfect sight alignment. Conscious decision to put the finger in there, okay? And I break my trigger. You'll be able to see this gun, I don't have my front sight on here right now, uh, but you'll be able to see the dip, okay? On an iron sighted pistol, you're gonna be looking at those sights. Do you see that, that sight dip? Are you seeing something like this? Dip, dip. Watch those sights. We just repeat that process over and over. With a red dot, if you present it out there and you see that dot dip, you'll see it blaringly right away, okay? so. Another four or five minutes, probably probably more with this one, because this is putting the whole package together. Strong hand grip, okay, picking the pistol up, strong hand grip, support hand grip, perfect sight alignment, perfect sight picture, and trigger press. Wow, I'm starting to do some shit now. Hey, my gun is not dipping. I'm not noticing my sights going anywhere. I'm starting to feel what that trigger feels like. I'm starting to feel my grip every time. I'm starting to develop a little callus right here, you know. I'm thinking, hey, I, I know where to put my hands now. I'm repeatable. The reason I teach it in these steps in this, this fashion is because, of course, there'd be a damn helicopter. Uh, the reason I teach it in this process and this order, I guess, is until we can have a repeatable grip and structure, we can't really pull the trigger the same, and we sure as hell can't align the sights the same. So until you build this top triangle structure and grip the same way, repeatably, over and over, and get some reps of it, we can't really do anything else repeatable. So reps, 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 right? Okay, so in there there's four blocks of like four minutes worth of practice. That's gonna take you 16 minutes of, of practice right there. Uh, the first one's building grip. The second one is building grip and sight alignment, sight picture. The third one is sitting there playing with your trigger, literally feeling it, feeling it, feeling it. And the fourth one is putting it all together. That's 16 minutes of reps. That's a lot. You're gonna you're gonna have a couple in your under your belt right then and there. 16 minutes, okay? Now, as you get more and more accustomed to shooting, you can kind of skip the part where you're just sitting there looking at your trigger, okay? You're gonna know what you're doing. Then you can kind of skip that one. And then it becomes 12 minutes of reps next time at the range. So, we're starting to do something now, baby. We got our, 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 our 
structure and our stance and our, our package behind the gun. We're feeling pretty solid. We remember that whole thing, okay? We're able to pick this pistol up, situate it in our, our strong hand, build the perfect strong hand, perfect support hand grip, present that thing out, get good sight picture, good sight alignment, and trigger press. Like, I think we're ready to get down. I think we're ready to do something, right? We've done some reps now. Okay, now the, the, the moment everybody's been waiting for. Gas her up. Let's go, let's get some. Let's, let's shoot some targets. Um, I've got my magazines and ammunition in a box that I had uh, over here closed up so I wouldn't get anything wild going on. If I'm doing dry manipulations with the gun, I always want any sources of ammunition to be separate, locked in a box like that, uh, still at the truck when you're at the range, in a separate room when you're at the house, making sure you're, you're, uh, you're stacking the, uh, the odds in your favor so you don't have any mishaps. So now we're ready to shoot. All right, finally. <laughs> Most people are probably thinking, holy hell, I just want to shoot the gun right and we all do we all do okay trust me we all just want to shoot okay so the this recipe and, and these reps they mean so much so much i mean it's just it's just wait i mean you got to you got to do it all right i got a couple of targets here just a few little array of targets no big deal we're going to do some super simple stuff here at first and I'm just going to show you examples of, of how to make things a little bit easier on yourself. I don't want to go far, right? We're going to start up close. Too many people want to grab a pistol and then start shooting at like 12 yards or something. And it's like, whoa, don't worry about hitting a pie plate at 10 yards. Uh, worry about hitting one of these little pasters at two yards. Okay, that'll, that'll show you more than, than trying to hit something far away because if we take the distance factor out of it and we just focus on the process that we just went through on the fundamentals of putting that gun in front of our face and doing work with it, uh, taking the distance out of that equation allows us to really focus on the process. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to aim right in here somewhere and just run a couple of rounds. Nothing special. Got my source of ammunition. When you're starting out, I, I suggest you can run out of a holster and, and do whatever you really want. Uh, we'll talk about drawing here in a second a little bit. Uh, but I suggest just kind of getting one single magazine, walking up to the line. Uh, even if you're all by yourself like I am, if you're privileged enough to have a range where you can kind of do what you want or your backyard or, or whatever, uh, or you're at the public range, you know, you're going to be right there at your station. I suggest getting one singular magazine coming up to the uh, <clears throat> to the to the firing line. All right. So I've got my source of ammunition. Remember, we did some reps of this, right? Whack! That magazine is in there, baby. All right. Rip that slide off of that gun. Rip the slide off. Dominate over the tool. Now we're about to shoot. Like like shit just got real. Okay, let's go. Uh, dominate over that tool. When you get a little bit slicker and a little bit more confident, you can add in a little press check action, which is basically just opening the slide slightly, looking in, making sure that you have a round chamber, uh, checking, making sure that your slide is back into battery and that you are uh, in fact ready to shoot. Okay, that you're, you have a loaded gun. Don't worry about that at, at first though. Just bang, make sure seat, lock tug on that magazine a little bit make sure that you have a seated locked magazine rip the slide off the gun all right <laughs> so now we're literally five feet away from this target please just do this okay literally five feet away from this target i have my solid perfect grip on my uh with my firing hand okay i've developed that solid perfect grip with my firing hand. Now, I'm gonna build my perfect solid grip with my support hand. All right, I'm here, I'm building all that. I'm presenting, okay? Remember, 
this is kind of the point where you'll see a lot of people start to lean back because they're like oh shit this thing's about to go off now now like things are different remember we did all that work standing over the table in a in a posture that's the same posture I want to carry right here so I got one foot a little bit behind the other that same posture ass out head forward face flat build that perfect freaking grip present that gun out without going like this without pushing your back backwards present that gun out everything is perfect and I'm here perfect sight alignment perfect sight picture conscious decision to put my finger on there all right now I think about all those reps of pulling that trigger I think about what that trigger felt like I think about you know all that shit all those those 8 10 minutes 12 minutes of reps of clicking that trigger right no different now the fact that this gun is going to go off is absolutely of no consequence i tell it what to do i dominate over the gun it ain't in control i am so perfect sight alignment perfect sight <laughs> Well, that wasn't too bad. It was loud. The gun kind of went, well, that wasn't too bad. Repeat the process, repeat the recipe. All right, so now what am I gonna do? I'm gonna settle back in after that first round. I'm gonna say, okay. All right, that wasn't bad. Perfect grip. Perfect grip, perfect grip, present out. Well, that wasn't too bad either. Perfect grip, perfect grip, perfect grip, perfect sight alignment, perfect sight. Well, that wasn't bad either. All right, we are literally five feet away from the target. <laughs> it, it just, I want this before I want you to back up. This is what I want. Five feet away, I want you to do that with your first three rounds. And I promise you that you will, if you repeat that process. All right, so now <clears throat> we're not gonna back up. I mean, I might back up a couple feet from there but that is not the, the, the goal here. What I want is to run the rest of this magazine as consistently as I can. I'm going through that checklist. Perfect grip with the strong hand. Perfect grip with the support hand. Perfect sight alignment. Perfect uh, sight picture. Perfect trigger press. Breakdown build all that shit back, okay? I don't want you to go like this, build it once, and then pull the trigger, and then pull the trigger, and pull the trigger, pull the trigger. I want you to learn how to build all that, that, that package, that, that setup for success, because it's all about that setup. It's not about, once you're already set up, being able to pull the trigger in, in succession. Like, that is a skill that we need to do, but I promise you that is, that's the easy part. Once you've already developed your perfect grip and your perfect sight alignment, perfect sight picture, pulling the trigger in succession is not the hard part. Building that perfect platform is. And as we get better and better and better and wanna start doing things a little bit more difficult, maybe start th doing things a little bit quicker, uh, that's the hard part is building that perfect structure and that perfect package behind the gun. Okay, once we got that built, Huh. Now we're we're ready to do work, right? Um, so I would suggest to do this for one whole magazine, whether that's 10 rounds or 15 rounds. I'm building my perfect setup. Perfect, 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 perfect. All right, I'm breaking back down. My trigger finger goes high and on the slide. <clears throat> Build all that perfect, perfect, perfect. perfect trigger on the slide or finger on the slide perfect 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 this ain't going too bad perfect 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 all 
right? Now I might be speeding up a little bit. I don't want you to. I want you to go super freaking slow. I just don't need to sit here and do this 5,000 times to, uh, to, you know, illustrate this same point. Um, <clears throat> now, we're starting to feel pretty good, right? If there are certain issues, okay, if you have a shot that you push, right, what I want you to do is stop and think. With a, a human, with a working brain, you should be able to sit there and think, why is those three shots in this little hole, you know, in this little group, and that other one that I just shot, why is it all the way to over there, or down there, or up here? What did I just do, okay? Now maybe you don't know the actual technique flaw or the thing that you just did, but you know you did something. So I want you to just sit there and mentally process that. This is all building you up to be a better shooter in the future. You're mentally thinking, there's a difference there. It wasn't the gun, and I, I, I have to figure out what that was. And I need to figure out what it was so that I can, you know, diagnose it and fix it in the future. So uh, there's a couple things that you potentially might be doing. Most of the time, it's that you're not gripping your perfect grip and setting your grip. So when we build that perfect grip, we want to set it out in front of our face. And as soon as it goes out in front of our face, it's like a light switch. It's just on, on on okay uh, we don't we don't adjust it and mess with the tensions or anything I mean it should be hard and as solid as you can make it right off the bat so you want to eh, it's on um, most of the time when we pull a shot or something it's because we're not setting that grip solidly and you're sympathetically uh, when you're pulling the trigger with one finger the rest of your fingers see how they want to move okay that's natural that's just because I'm a person, <laughs> uh, they, they want to move, they want to grip at the same time. So we need to set that grip in a solid way so that they don't, they can't really move. You know what I mean? Um, and most of the time that's your issue. Now sometimes it's, you're letting the, the explosion of the gun get into your head, right? And you might be pushing on it. So if you follow the, the, the process there and you really get it in your head that we dominate over that gun and then this, this damn thing does what I tell it to do when I tell it to do it, we can get rid of that, uh, that anticipation kind of pushing on the gun right before the, uh, the actual shot goes off. I want you to come back unload the gun and repeat a couple of those steps. Repeat building that perfect grip and pressing your trigger perfectly to the rear. Run a couple of dry reps. Run three or four or five minutes worth of that again. Go back up to the line. Think. Use your brain. Okay? We're not just simply making noise out here. We're thinking. Every shot we take is a big deal. Every shot we take is a learning experience. So, we just set up and shot, and set up and shot, and set up and shot for one magazine. Now, the next drill that I want you to do is set up and then shoot in succession like we talked about. So we know that, that the hard part is the setup. The easier part is just shooting once we're already set up. But we still need to practice both. So, seat, lock, tug, Rip the slide off the gun. Decock if you got a uh, double action, single action unit. And again, we are going to make sure, bang, 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 bang. Set up for success. Perfect support hand, perfect support hand, perfect support hand. Perfect sight alignment, perfect right pick. Perfect trigger press. The actual trigger manipulation that I want, 
see where this is, is break the shot. I immediately let off the trigger. I reset it in recoil while the gun's going off, while it's, while it's going up in its little recoil path. I immediately pow, come back off, prep, and I'm right back there again. So we'll do another shot. I'm prepped, I'm right back to the wall again. That's really what I want you guys to uh, to do. May as well talk a little bit about draw because uh, a lot of people are going to want to work <clears throat> from a holster. Okay, so draw is super simple. It, it really can't get any simpler. Um, a lot of people try to overcomplicate the draw and then they end up with a, with a kind of a terrible draw, okay? If we try to overcomplicate it, it's just going to look like shit. So all we really want to do, I want you to go ahead, get a perfect grip on the pistol. I don't care if it takes you an hour to draw the gun at this point. It matters not. What we want to do is do shit perfectly, just like all these reps. Perfection. Not speed, nothing. Perfection. Just like the shots on target, our trigger manipulation, the way we're feeling things and touching things and, and observing and, and, uh, and really feeling. Perfection. Okay? Perfection. So, grip the gun, get the perfect grip on it before it ever even comes out of the holster. And at the exact same time as you put your hand on the gun, I want you to put your hand on your sternum. So, if I'm here and I go to draw the gun, pow, that's step number one. You gotta move both your hands at the same time. One, uh, there, well, there's a billion reasons for it, but the biggest reason is to get this hand into a safe place so it's not just kind of hanging out here in no man's land and you draw the gun and point it at your own fingers, okay? Or at your own hand. So, one, perfect grip. Get that perfect grip established in the holster. Perfect grip. Hand comes up to the sternum. Gun comes out. Hand goes into meat. Kind of bring it into your center line. And then you're thinking, all right, well, I've done this a million times already. Perfect, perfect, perfect strong hand grip. Start to build my perfect support hand grip. Present. That's all, all we really need to do, okay? Uh, the only other thing that I would maybe add to that is step one, step two, as we marry the hands together and you start to build this, what I would tell people is, is basically you just want to act like uh, there's a bayonet, a knife on the end of your gun, right? And you want to stab the target. So if there was a, a knife on the end of this gun and I wanted to draw it out of the holster and stab that target, I wouldn't go like this and I wouldn't go like this. So the whole fishing thing or bowling thing kind of gets taken right out of the picture because if there's a knife on here, I want to stab it, stab it, stab it, stab it. Real simple. Go straight there as little as possible. Don't come clear up high like this and, and out. Nothing like this. It's just, it doesn't need to be done. Okay. Simply. Been shooting Glocks forever. I forget to decock this thing. Okay, so then we get some reps in, right? We get some reps and some reps and some reps. Pull magazine, draw. Driving that gun, draw. Driving that gun. Okay, so that's the next thing, draw, run some rounds. If you don't have a holster, you're not working from a holster, or you're out of a range, keep picking the gun up off the table and run some rounds. The next one we'll do, <clears throat> the 
Next uh, drill we're gonna do is a simple table start. Okay, this is just getting a lot of manipulations for a little bit of rounds. What I want you to do, remember the first reps we did? Pick this gun up, get that master grip. Now we're gonna feed it and rip it. Build that perfect grip and drive a shot. Then this gives you a bunch of reps also in emptying and clearing a firearm. So we rack that round out. Check, check, look away. Check, 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 check. All right, guess what? Now we can't leave this round go to waste because it costs $700 a piece right now at the time of filming this. So uh, we can't leave that go to waste, but this is the drill. This is it. I got my magazine sitting here, got my unloaded gun, place my hands on the table and go. Build the perfect grip support hand or strong hand, drive the magazine up in and run the slide rip the slide off the gun build the perfect grip present drive a good shot okay break it back down source of ammunition comes out of the gun rack the slide round goes flying into oblivion check it all out do the do the same process again solid drill why might not be the most uh flashy okay and ensure we can make it flashy okay all you gotta do is do it faster but and it also might be a little bit redundant that's the point this is the equivalent what we're doing here today is the equivalent of driving around in the parking lot when you're 15 and a half years old now the next thing to uh, to add to this drill is dose por favor all right so two rounds don't do that. Okay, two rounds now. And then you just run through a magazine of this. So this is all the drills that I want you to do that first day. Now, how do we start getting better and, and what's more important, speed or accuracy? You know, that, that whole argument. Uh, as far as becoming a really good shooter, you need to be fast and accurate and, and develop an ability to be accurate at some sort of speed. Um, but as a beginner, perfection is more important than anything. So your manipulations and your hits on target are the most important thing there is. Perfection, perfection, perfection. It doesn't matter if it takes you an hour. It truly doesn't in the beginning. Then, once you get repeatable, though, it's like, well, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and fire this thing up real quick. Uh, <clears throat> once I get repeatable at just simply building my <laughs> and putting shots on target, once that becomes like not that fun, I don't have to really try very hard to do that. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, I want to I want to start going a little quicker. I want to complicate the drills a little bit So then basically all I'm gonna do is add in a little bit more complication to the drills and Instead of adding speed to the drills first I want to add in complication So then what am I gonna do? Let's say I've got a setup like this. I got one little mag pouch and a holster. I'll do draw Oh, <laughs> Reload Okay, very, very simple stuff. Very, very simple. It's just adding a tiny bit of complication to the drill. Draw. All right, I'm not, uh, I'm not doing a rack or anything. I'm just simply exchanging one magazine for the other. Not, not, a, not a very complicated thing whatsoever. Okay. And I'm trying to really put holes where I want to put them. I got a nice little, you know, softball size group up there. Uh, I'm not trying to keep a ragged hole and I'm not trying to really go fast either. So now 
now what do I do? Okay, well now what I'm gonna do is do draw, step to the side a little bit, one shot, reload, step to the side a little bit, one shot. So draw. All right, perfectly easy, simple, simple little stuff. Extremely easy, I'm just adding a tiny bit of complication to it, nothing special. Uh, then, after you start to get a little more used to that, right, there's, there's, there's a couple targets here. All right, well, let's do draw two shots to this target, two shots to this target. All right, I'm worried about putting my, uh, putting my rounds where I want them to go. And we'll do a couple slide blocks. So I'm worried about putting my rounds where I want them to go and, and uh, <laughs> not worried about speed really at all. I'm just kind of doing the work that needs done. Whatever I dictate, I can make up the drills as I go along. So I'm set up for success. Here I'm gonna do draw one round and then slide lock reload where we use the slide release to, to unlock the, uh, the slide to let it go forward. So draw. Okay, simple, simple stuff here. I can set that back up by putting an empty magazine back into the gun and run it again. Okay, simple, simple stuff here. As you notice, it's kind of nice and handy to have a little table like this. I can do it off the table if I'm at a range that doesn't allow me to draw or something. Just. Alright, that one was a little sloppy. Alright, let's do that again. Alright, this is all just beautiful, beautiful, easy, low round count manipulation. Alright, now you might be thinking, what happened to racking, right? Well, once you get a little bit more tuned in, a little more confident, you can use that slide lock button, uh, slide release button to send the slide home. It's obviously, as you can see, it's more efficient to do so that way. Uh, so that's the way I choose to do it. As you get better and more confident, that's what that allows you to do. <clears throat> obviously, if I wanna just shoot the A zone of this target that's seven yards away now, and I wanna go fast, I can do that, okay? It's real simple once you get pretty slick. I can guarantee that all day, every day. Real easy once you get pretty slick and you know what you're doing, okay? Pretty simple stuff. It's not, uh, not hard whatsoever. Now, let's go to a target over here and we'll do a little recoil control action. Let's, uh, let's, let's turn it on a little bit. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna shoot for that hole right there. Now, I'm gonna present out and shoot for that hole and try to control the gun as much as I possibly can and pull the trigger as fast as I can. All right, ready? Okay, so these are the kind of little exercises that we need to do. Now, again, we're not, uh, we're not worried about the results necessarily. We're worried about the process of it. And we're worried about how much can we gain from this in a diagnostic manner, okay? What do my sights look like when I'm trying to do that? <clears throat> how big is my circle? So go to nine feet to that three yard mark like I just did and try to replicate this. Drive the gun as hard as you can. See where, what happens. Are shots going down here? Our shots going up here, up here, up here. Now what's going on? And then start to think, okay, what did that feel like? How good did I do the whole thing? And basically just pull the trigger as fast as you possibly can. Um, that, that's a good diagnostic little test. Here at the end of this, I just wanna give you guys a couple of uh, industry standard drills, simple stuff to do. Uh, like the little recoil drill where you're only a couple of yards away and you just kind of try to keep as tight a group as you possibly can and, and spray on the target. That is solid work. Do a good bit of that. Do a good bit of shooting groups. I'm a big fan of shooting groups. Uh, then 
what I'd like you guys to do is start to incorporate a little bit of target transitions, okay? Now, target transitions don't need to be necessarily with a multiple array of targets like this because if you're in an indoor range or something, you might not have the opportunity to set up targets where you can hit this target, this target, that target, this target. You might not have that opportunity. So what you want to do in that case is, okay, we're going to hit this, uh, this target back here. I'm going to do one in that little group that it's already there. So one in the bottom of the A zone and then one in the head. Draw. Okay. And I just, I tell myself what I want out of the drills. Okay. So start moving the gun around, start transitioning, start building a perfect sight picture on this target and then building a perfect sight picture on this target. Start moving around a little bit. If you have a, an indoor range, you can simply have a, uh, a cardboard target or a silhouette target or a target that's provided by the range and hit this little circle and then that little circle and then this little circle. I mean, it's super simple. You don't need anything special. Super accountable for your accuracy and focus on perfection, okay? Focus on the process. Do this step by step. And I guarantee you, you will be confident, confident leaving the range that first day, confident, okay? Now you got a lot of work to do. There, there is, there's no such thing as mastering this stuff, okay? It's constant refinement after this point. But the first thing we need to do is set ourselves up for success when we're out here on the flat range and, and everything is perfect and we've got a simple, a target in front of us and nothing bad is happening. There's no stress of a, of, a, of a competition or no stress of an actual encounter, gunfight, anything like that. Like we're just doing the work and becoming proficient at using this tool and telling this tool what to do so that we can get better and better and better and more confident. And then eventually after you've focused on perfection for a while, okay, now let's start to turn the juice up. Let's do a little bit of fun. Let's have a little bit of fun. Let's set up a couple targets and just send her a little bit. Let's have some fun. One, it's fun. And two, we have to find out where the wheels fall off. So if I'm transitioning and, and shooting all these targets, it's, it's not really that fun for me to go bang, 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 dink, and hit that piece of steel because I know I can do that over and over and over again at that speed and, and just, and, and achieve perfection. I'm hitting exactly where I want to and I'm, and I'm doing the work. So for me, I wanna start pushing it a little bit. I wanna see, okay, how fast can I transition across all four of these targets, maintain A zone hits and hit that piece of steel? Well, let's find out. Okay, I don't have my timer with me right now, but that's not even the point right here, but a timer is going to be something that's a very useful tool. Because then we not only have the target as a measurement, we also have the timer as a measurement, okay? And then our third measurement of how well we're doing things is how perfect can we do it? How consistent can we do it, okay? Can I do this same thing 20 freaking times in a row, okay? And then push and speed, pushing complexity of drills, pushing some, let's, let's start moving around them, okay? Can I shoot that tight little group while I'm walking forward? Can I shoot a decent group and can I stay in the A zone when I'm really pushing forward, okay? If I'm moving sideways, can I still hit that A zone at 10 yards? Can I still do this? Am I able to draw and hit that A zone in 1.5 seconds from 25 yards? Can I, you know, you start to really uh, just 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 compound the stuff and you get more and more confident so let's uh let's run across here once real quick just to have a little bit of fun before it gets dark all right so i got a little trigger freeze on this target right here and i had to transition to the steel in order to give myself a little bit of a second to, to get my finger moving again and then transmission back to that target. So I realized, oh, 
I'm, I'm losing time, I'm losing time, I'm losing time. Okay, go ahead, hit the steel, then come back, right? And those are things you get good at, and naturally your subconscious ability comes into play. I've got all my A's right there at that speed. So guess what? If I'm hitting all A's at that speed, guess what we need to do? All right, we need to speed her up. Let's get down, okay? Let's send one. Oh. All right. A's, A's, A's. And I freaking missed a piece of steel. <laughs> okay? Man, this stuff is so fun, guys. It is. Once you start to get confident, you start to have a good time, it is so fun to just get down. I'm going to do one shot now. Dude, it's a blast. It is a blast. The better you get, the more used to... Uh, you know, letting her fly a little bit. It's just, it is so fun just to let her rip. It's so much fun when you start to really get tuned in and you feel confident and you're able to really uh, make this thing do what you tell it to do. Guys, people, humans, let her rip. Start with this process. Run this process for your first five range visits. It's, it's 20 minutes, 25 minutes. The first one might take you 30 minutes to run through the whole thing and then start the actual shooting process. And then if you see your desired results on target aren't quite what you want, okay? So let's say you run through the whole process and the 30 minutes of, of dry reps in those four or five minute blocks, right? You do that whole process. Then you start shooting at that three yards or whatever we were doing earlier. And you see that you're messing up a little bit. I want you to come back, unload the gun, and repeat a couple of those steps. Repeat building that perfect grip and pressing your trigger perfectly to the rear. Run a couple of dry reps. Run three or four or five minutes worth of that again. Go back up to the line. Think. Use your brain. Okay? We're not just simply making noise out here. We're thinking. Every shot we take is a big deal. Every shot we take is a learning experience. And then as you get more and more solid you start to get really good you start start achieving some uh, some some perfect reps start to speed it up then when you miss when you speed up what happened where, where what happened there okay what what what's going on here why did i miss that piece of steel the one run well i over overcompensate or, or transitioned a little bit too hard and when the gun swung a little bit too far past, I thought I saw what I needed to see. I broke my trigger and it went right off the left edge of the steel. So it's, uh, man, it's important. You gotta push, you gotta have the wheels fall off a little bit and then just think, 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 think. So I appreciate you. If you watch this whole thing, I appreciate it. I think it'll help some folks. Take her easy, guys. Be safe.